If you're an automotive enthusiast like myself, you've probably at one point or another really wanted a Supra. And why not, right? Supras are awesome. They have that incredible straight six cylinder, that 2JZ. They sound amazing. They make tons of power. They have a timeless look. And they're just all around a, a great cool car. But then things happen, right? You get older, the prices of Supras skyrocket. Let's say you get married, you have a kid. Maybe you have a second kid on the way like myself. Well, then those thoughts of having a Supra kind of turn into something no more than just a, a daydream. But then you think, hey, Supras have back seats, right? I can, I can pitch that to the wife. I mean, the kids are small. The back seat doesn't have to be large. Ah, she'll never go for it. But what if she does? So you know what? Sometimes it's just better to ask forgiveness than it is permission. And that's what I did. So I pulled the trigger. I wound up getting that inline six cylinder I've so longed for. I've never had one. I've never built one. I've always wanted a straight six. So I got one. However, it's not a Supra, but it's the next best thing. I got a Trailblazer! Woo! Complete with inline six Amerabara. That's right, we got a Trailblazer, complete with an inline six 4200 Atlas motor. Now this Trailblazer has 86,000 miles, about to turn 87,000 miles. Uh, it's super clean. It is, uh, I think the se I'm the second or third owner now. Does have a little bit of surface rust here and there. Um, there's some, some rust and corrosion underneath. Uh, nothing's rotted out really, uh, but definitely some stuff that I need to like keep an eye on. Uh, overall though, the interior is in great shape, uh, the exterior is in great shape, and I think it's a great canvas for what we really want to do. So you may be wondering, well, why a trailblazer? Well, if you'll indulge me for a few moments, I'll let you know. So, the past couple of years, my buddy Calvin Nelson, otherwise known as Niblack57, um, from the Niblack57 YouTube channel, uh, his link is in the description below. He has been building these motors uh, that came out of the Trailblazers, the 02 to 09, uh, the Atlas 4200, and he's been having incredible success with them. Granted, he's had to make a lot of his parts himself, one of which is this air to water intercooler, and he's made turbo manifolds. This is not one of them, but this is a company that now offers them who worked with Calvin to get this made. So finally, after I decided, hey, I'm going to build a Colorado but before building the Colorado, maybe I should build one of these motors that has been built before. And I definitely like the SUV. I want the practicality of the SUV. I've always loved the Trailblazer SS. So I'll pick up a Trailblazer. Now I wanted to go, I want to make it a little bit easier on myself than having to piggyback an ECU off of the factory ECU. So after talking with Calvin over numerous conversations, the best trailblazer to buy for me was an 08 and 09. And the reason is in 08, they went to speed density. And when you tune a Atlas 4200 trailblazer with HP tuners on the stock computer using speed density, it's really no different than tuning an LS motor, right? So if you have someone that can tune an LS motor, they can tune this 4200. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so that solved the tuning issue. Now, I got this manifold from Artec Performance. This is for the Atlas 4200. 
I know they worked with Calvin on developing this, and Calvin used a trailblazer that he had at his place uh, at the time. So it should fit in the trailblazer relatively easy. There's going to be some things I have to move around here and there, obviously. That's uh, kind of to be expected. But I got this manifold because I knew it was a quality part. Um, it was pricey, but it is what it is. Now, Calvin has made multiple times over 600 wheel horsepower from a completely stock long block. I'm talking like stock sealed. No ring gap, nothing. Just completely stock, put the turbo kit on it, tune it, it's making over 600 wheel. <laughs> he's actually made over 700 wheel and completed a drag and drive event now he's helped me out tremendously uh this air to water intercooler was actually in the fairmont uh that i'm pretty sure made 600 wheel on a stock motor as it was this turbo this is an s372 um, so i'll be going i'll be using air to water as well as this s372 the air to water intercooler i like the idea because there's not a lot of room to work with under the hood of the trailblazer so you don't really have a lot of space for intercooler piping. You don't have a lot of space for an uh, air to air intercooler. Uh, so I can put this where the factory air box goes and run three quarter inch hose down to a heat exchanger, which is much, much smaller than an air to air, -to -air intercooler. Uh, I am going to be running a essentially cheap Chinese wastegate um, for those that don't know. I know Calvin runs a lot of these as well. Uh, he's got a video on what to look for if you buy one of these and go this route. Uh, essentially, you, you have to take it apart, make sure it was assembled correctly, put some Loctite on uh, a lot of the hardware that is both interior and exterior on this, and make sure that everything is tight when you put it back together. Uh, that being said, um, I think that fast SUVs are super fun. Right, like I love the Trackhawk. I've always loved Trailblazer SSs. Uh, they have the Range Rover. Uh, is it Range Rover? Range Rover SBR, which I think is really cool. Um, and for those that didn't know, right, and I surely didn't know until recently, but in 2002, when this Trailblazer came out, GM actually produced a twin turbo Atlas 4200 Trailblazer. Now, it never made it into production, but the vehicle itself did actually make it to life. It came to fruition. Motor Trend did an article on it, and it was incredibly cool. It, it only made 400 horsepower. However, in the interview process, uh, GM's chief engineer, Ron Kosiba, was even noted at smirking at the idea that it could have made a lot more. Uh, when they asked why they only made 400 horsepower, they pretty much just said, because that sounded like a good number, right? So the fact that they they made power with them with forced induction, um, and they were going to do that, but then unfortunately it just never came to pass, uh, more or less makes me want to do it even more, right? So my goal for this project essentially is to make the Trailblazer SS that GM never did. Um, I want to take my Trailblazer and make a... SS clone out of it. I'd like to put the SS wheels, the SS bumpers. I want to make it look like an SS. But then I'm going to pull into the burnout box at a drag strip. People are going to be like, oh, that's cool. That's an SS. What did those come with? You know, six liter LS2s? I think so. And then I'm going to do a burnout and the Trailblazer is going to sound like a Supra, right? And then people's minds are just going to melt. They're not going to know what happened, right? I don't expect or nor do I want to make an astronomical amount of horsepower with this vehicle, but my goal is 500 wheel horsepower. Somewhere in the five to 600 range, but 500 being like, I, I'd like to make 500. 
Um, I think it's more than possible, given the track record of these motors uh, to date. Uh, and I actually wanted a 4x4. So this is actually a 4x4 uh, Trailblazer. I don't know how it will hold up. Uh, granted, these Trailblazers have a 4L60, right? So they're not the strongest transmissions. And I don't know if that 4x4 system and that transfer case that came in these is going to handle a lot more power. So kind of uncharted territory here. However, I have some contingency plans if things don't work out. Uh, essentially just being going to a Trailblazer SS all-wheel drive system, right? Their full-time all-wheel drive, their front diff and their rear ends are incredibly strong. Uh, it would be a lot more money in the long run, so I don't know if I would do that or if I would just convert it to rear-wheel drive and throw a Trailblazer SS rear end in it. But uh, that's kind of the goal for this build is a Trailblazer SS clone with the Atlas motor boosted properly. Now, I, I wanted to show you guys all these parts because I am invested into this build. I've been doing a lot of this behind the scenes. I didn't want to make this video until I had a lot of this stuff. And there's a lot more stuff I have that's not seen. I have uh, snake eater injectors, same injectors that Calvin runs on a lot of his vehicles. I have a blow off valve that's not here. Um, what else do I have? A couple of connectors. So I got this tank from my buddy Zach Myers. Uh, this is a Whipple pump and a Whipple uh, coolant tank. That's from a S550 Whipple kit. Um, I had to buy a connector for this. Uh, this is actually the, this pump that they use is the same pump that Tesla uses uh, for their cooling pumps uh, on their P85Ds. So that's actually like the source of this, which is kind of cool. Um, got a Mac valve, 450 uh, Walbera in-tank pump, E85 compatible, which is crucial. I do plan to run E85, uh, but that's it. Uh, the biggest thing is I'd like to come up for a name for the project, um, something cool. I thought I thought T Bass might be kind of cool, but it also sounds kind of cheesy. That's just essentially T B S S, right, with an A in the middle for Atlas. But uh, I'd like to come up with a name, whatever you guys think. Uh, please put a comment in the comment section below uh, what you think uh, would a, a good name would be for the the Trailblazer build. And uh, let me know what you think. I I'm really excited to get started with this. I have not been exci this excited about a build since my Terminator Swap Fox body. And uh, I, I was when I'm really, really, really excited for a build, this is what I do. I get like everything for the build, and then I just start going to town. I pretty much don't stop until it's done. Uh, so my time frame for this is hopefully two months-ish, running, driving, under boost. Uh, that's a pretty, uh, pretty tall order, I think, but I think it's, I think it's feasible. Uh, episode one will be shortly. I'm waiting for a couple parts to show up and those will be the, uh, oil relocation fittings for, uh, reprioritizing some of the oil in the oil system to the main bearings. And we'll get into that more when that video comes out, but Along with installing that, I also need to install an AccuSump slash accumulator. And I'll, again, we'll talk about that in that video. Uh, but huge thanks to Calvin for all the help that he's done. Uh, huge thanks to Artec Performance, uh, Snake Eater Injectors, uh, anyone that has really, uh, you know, supplied parts for this build. Um, I'm not sponsored by any of them. However, you know, love to build a relationship in the future. But for now, like, want to get the build started and get it underway. Uh, let me know what you think. Again, please uh, put a comment in the comment section below what you think the name for the build should be, and uh, I look forward to making some series videos coming up shortly. Until uh, next time, peace.